Paint.net is probably my favorite free image and photo editing software that there is out there available. And some of the reasons that I like it so much is it's very easy for teachers to use. It offers a lot of the same advanced editing options that Photoshop offers, but I also love that it has a Microsoft feel to it. Paint.net, it originally started as an undergraduate college senior design project, and it was mentored by Microsoft, and it's currently being maintained by some of the alumni that originally created it. So since Microsoft mentored it, that's a big reason why it still has that Microsoft feel to it. The original intention of this program was for it to be a free replacement for the Microsoft Paint software that comes with Windows. And I don't really know why they didn't replace the Paint dot, the, the Paint program completely because Paint.net is a lot more advanced and friendly to use. But nonetheless, it is still out there available for you to use and download. Another thing that I love about this program is they offer a really nice website that gives you a lot of information on it. And the website is GetPaint.net. And this is where you can go and download the software. You can find a lot of the tutorials about it, find different features, and install add-ons. Once you get really comfortable with it, there's a lot of add-ons that you can install to it that will let you do a lot more um, advanced photo editing techniques. If you come to this website to download the software, be very careful because you're going to see that looking right here up at the top, you're going to see three options to download. You have this blue button, this green one, and then this link up here at the top. A lot of people get really tricky and they'll make an advertisement and it looks like there's a download button on there. And so if you're not careful and you just click on something that says download, it could be taking you to something that's not the paint.net program. So if you want to install it from this website, do this link up here at the top and that's going to download the program for you. I also have the download file burnt onto a CD. Um, and it also has practice images that you can play with and user's guides and tutorials and videos and stuff like that all on that one CD. So if you would like to have a copy of one of those CDs for you to keep or take home, please feel free to ask me and I can get one of those for you. So that is a really neat website. Please be sure to use that as a resource when learning the program. So when you're in paint.net, this is the screen that you're going to see. This is what's called your work area. And anytime you're going to be editing a photo, your photo is going to show up here in the middle. You're also going to have your menu bar up here at the top that's very similar to what you would see in any Microsoft program. You also have some more tools, options down here, cut, copy, paste, save. Um, this is your options bar, and these options are going to change depending on the tool that you currently have selected. And your tools are going to be listed here in this floating menu. And right now it's floating, meaning I can just kind of move it wherever I want it to go. But you'll see that right now my magic wand tool is selected, so these are the tool options that I have for the magic wand. But if ever I want to change to my paint bucket, my options you're going to see are going to change. So keep that in mind if you're looking for an option and you see you can't find something that you're looking for, make sure that you have the proper tool selected. You also have palettes throughout the window, and that's what these boxes over here are. You have your history palette, which is going to keep up with every little thing that you do. Um, it's a great tool for you to use to go and undo steps. If you've done five steps in a row and you want to get back to the point before you change the photo to black and white, you can look here in your history palette, go to the point that you want to undo to and undo everything up to that point. You have your layers palette down here and I'm going to explain layers in much more detail in another video for you but that's where your layers palette is. And then you have your colors palette over here to the left and these are floating windows as well so these can be moved to wherever you want them to be if it's more convenient for you to be to put them somewhere else. Please feel free to move them. Whenever you're doing your color palette this more button is really handy for you. It's going to give you a lot more options. So if you're wanting a blue or a pink, you can click around this color wheel. But if you know the exact color that you want to use, for example, Friendship, we have a standard blue color. Um, and there are codes for that. There's RGB codes for that. So our blue RGB is 2766152. And you'll see that's going to be our blue. And our gold is 255, 
two, ten, and zero, and that's the official friendship gold. So if you're wanting to create something for your website and you want to be sure to use the official blue or the official gold or whatever the colors may be, that RGB option is a really handy tool for you to use as well. And you also have a transparency option down here at the bottom. So those are your palettes. You'll notice at the top right of every one of your palette, you're going to see a little red X. That will close that palette for you. So if you get to working on something and you accidentally close it and you want to know how to get those palettes back, all you have to do is come up to your window menu and you're going to see your four palettes listed here. So you have tools, history, layers, and colors. And all you have to do is click on the palette that you want to reappear and it will reappear back in your window for you.